What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be fully installing this Airlift 3P air ride system onto my wide body Scion FRS. You guys can use this guide for pretty much any car in the world. This is going to be specific to Scion FRS's, Subaru BRZ's, and Toyota GT86's. This specific kit here is a Airlift 3P system. It is not the 3H. A 3H does have the height sensors as well, which I'm not going to be covering in this video. But you can also use this guide for the V2 system as well. There's going to be a few little differences here and there. But for the most part, the install will be nearly identical. If you have not seen the video where I unboxed this whole kit straight from Airlift and went through and showed you guys what every single little thing is, I'd highly suggest you go watch that video. I'll have it linked right up in the top right hand corner. The first thing I'm going to work on is getting the car up in the air, get the wheels off, get the coilovers off. Currently I have coilovers on the car. Removing coilovers and removing the stock suspension is going to be the same exact process. Let's get this thing torn apart. The car is off the ground, the wheels are off, it is time to remove the factory suspension. I already made a super in-depth detailed video on how to do this on a, on a Scion FRS or 86. And if I put everything into this video, it would probably make it 3 hours long. So I'll just link it right up in that top right hand corner. So the BC coilovers are off and what is going to be replacing those is these right here. These literally just go right in place of those. You can literally bolt these airbags on and act as if they were coilovers. Same exact install. There are a few things we need to check over before we start installing air ride on the car. So if you look up here, there's bolts sticking out. Those are going to be 100% hitting the bag. So we're going to be shaving all of these off. We need it completely, completely smooth. These little white tabs here push those out and you should be fine. So we're gonna have to do that on both sides on the front. On the rear disc of this car, there's nothing like that that we need to do. But make sure you guys check over your own application and where the bag's gonna be sitting. If there's anything sharp, anything sticking out, make sure you guys are smoothing that out. Everything smoothed out in there. Now I'm gonna plug all the holes with just some black RTV sealant and then spray black paint on the exposed bare metal so it doesn't rust out and we can move on to the other side. Guys, this is one of the most overlooked things when people are installing airbags, whether that be at home or a lower end shop. I'm sure higher end shops go through and do all this, but guys, please do that. Do yourself a favor and make sure your bags are not gonna be rubbing on anything sharp or anything at all. You, do not want, you don't want your bags touching anything. Yeah, I know it doesn't match, but no one's gonna stand here anyway, guys. That is just to make sure we don't have rust. Okay, the car is prepped. The car is ready for its air suspension. Now it is time to get these front bags assembled with the leader lines and get these on the car. So what we're needing to do right now is uh, install one of these on each of the bags. The end of this goes into there and then one of these fittings goes on the other end. Let me show you guys how that's done. So grab one of the leader lines, you can open it up. This is the same on either end so it doesn't matter which way you screw it in. But we're just going to start screwing it into the bottom here and we're going to tighten it hand tight. So you can't get it too far by your hand. As soon as you get it as tight as you can with your hand, grab a 15 millimeter wrench and we're gonna tighten it one three quarter turns past hand tight. So that's one turn and now we're gonna go another three quarters of a turn. It's a half and three quarters right there. Now we're gonna grab the other end of the line and we have we have four different fittings here. One set is for 3 8 line and one set is for a quarter inch line. I have 3 8 inch line, so I'm gonna use the 3 8 one. If you guys have quarter inch, you're gonna use the quarter inch. Same thing here, guys. Thread it on hand tight. Then we're going one and three quarters turns past hand tight. So this strut is assembled, ready to go on the car. This is the left side, it says right here, front left, or FL for front left. Let's assemble the right one and get these on the car. So these bags go on the same exact way that coilovers would go on. We're just going to feed it up through, get the top three nuts on first. And when we're coming through guys, you want to make sure that this camera plate is running like this. So it needs to look exactly like that. If it's turned to the front or to the back, your camera plate is not going to work as it should. And we're just going to throw these on hand tight for now and move on to the lower section. Same thing as a factory car down here as well. If you need, you can use a jack or you can just lift it up, get under it and lift it up. And we're going to be using all the factory hardware down here. So the factory camera bolt down here and factory bolts for the brake line and all that good stuff. Make sure you're getting those sway bar end links on as well. You gotta got have to replace your factory ones with the airlift ones. So the torque specs on this are as follows. The two bolts holding the lower mount to the hub are 129 foot pounds. The brake line bolt, this little eight millimeter bolt back here is 24 foot pounds. 
And then the three camera plate bolts on top to the chassis are 15 foot pounds. One last thing, this end link is 22 foot pounds. Go ahead, get all this torque down and then we can bust out the passenger side as well. Same exact process. Now that we have both of the struts on, let's open up this bag with the spanner wrench. And also included in here is the dampening adjusters which go on the top of the strut. So they just thread on hand tight. There's a little knurling area where you can tighten them up. Throw one of these on each strut. So you just fish it down in there and tighten this section here. I'm gonna run these all the way soft for now. And you can always adjust these uh, based on your pressure. The more pressure, the more PSI you're gonna run in the bags, the stiffer it will be. So if you want it softer, go softer. If you want it harder, go harder. Next up, it is time to assemble the rear. Same exact process as the front guys. Get the leader line on and then get the hose fitting on. That connects to this 3 8 line here. We're gonna be doing this rear setup a little differently. So we're actually gonna put this dampening adjuster on the, on the bag first before we install on the car. Because once you get on the car, there's no way of getting this on. So we can throw that dampening adjuster knob on. And then if you guys want, you can throw these extenders on that they also include. They just attach with this little Allen head here. I would highly recommend putting these on or else you don't really have a way to get to these. Now it is time to get these on the rear of the car. These are the same right, right to left. So you don't have to worry about that. As it says on the tag, it just says R for rear and R for rear on that one as well. With the rears, I would highly recommend getting the lower mount on first. So what you do, you fish this up through the body and then you get the lower mount on first and then you use a jack to jack up the top mount. If you do it the opposite way, it's still possible, but it's very hard to do that way. One thing you guys are gonna have to do if you're using these rear extenders, I cut away some of the carpet so that can extend through. Before it was kind of just bending all that up. And then when you fold all this back, looking good, looking good, throw that back. That's all you're gonna see is that right there. So I'd recommend cutting away that carpet, just a little bit of it. The torque specs on the rear, the lower mount is 89 foot pounds, the top two are 22 foot pounds. Okay guys, all of the air struts are on the car. Now it is time to move on to like air management, running all the, the lines for the air, running the wiring, getting all the wiring figured out, and also mounting everything in the trunk. So what I'm gonna do, and it's gonna be a separate video, but I'm gonna personally be building a wood floor for my trunk just so I have something solid to mount the air compressor, or the, not the compressor, the tank and the manifold to. I'm gonna throw the compressor down in the spare tire well so it's kinda out of the way. So I'm gonna be doing all that in a separate video. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to wire everything though, run all the lines. But if you guys wanna see the trunk video I'll be making, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you guys will see that in a few videos. So what I'm gonna work on right now is getting all the wiring and all the lines to each bag ran throughout the car. That is probably one of the most time consuming things. So I'm just gonna figure out where all this wiring goes right now and kinda lay it out on the ground so I make sure I get it in the car properly. Okay, let me show you what's going on here. So this here is the rear of the harness. That is a relay that just screws down to whatever. This plug in here goes to the manifold. These two go to the compressor and the wires on the compressor are red and black as well. So red goes to red, black goes to black. This wire right here, this little plug in down here, that's if you wanna run a second compressor. So that's, that's the wiring for that. These four would be for the height sensors. We're not running height sensors today, so we don't gotta worry about that. Up here, we have a few wires we need, to we need to connect. So this pink one, that is remote turn on. We're gonna be connecting that to like a fuel pump relay, an ECU relay, ECU fuse, something like that. Black and red here. Red goes to positive battery, black goes to the ground on the battery. And then this USB looking plug-in right here, it actually is USB. That goes right to the controller, the hand controller. And if you don't wanna use a hand controller, which I would recommend installing, you can download the Airlift app and control this all from your phone. So right now I'm just gonna tear a few things apart in the car, get access to run some wiring and to run some air lines. And I'm just gonna pop off these panels here. That's where the all the wiring's gonna run and the air lines, or the, the one airline going to up there. The battery's on the side of the car, so I'm gonna run the wiring under here as well. I'll show you guys how I am running everything when, when I get this thing torn apart. Currently, I'm working with, I have all the wiring down there. I haven't really done much with it. And I am going to run everything on just the passenger side because I found a super easy way to run it through the firewall. So again, guys, every car is gonna be significantly different here as far as running it through the firewall. But on this car, there's a plug right there you can pop out. I'm gonna drill a hole in that plug and then run the two wires that go to the battery there and then the two air lines that go to each strut through this plug here. The one that goes to that strut over there, I'm just gonna come through, 
run it across the engine bay, probably up top here because it looks super clean, and then go down through there and connect to that airbag over there. So I'm gonna drill a hole in this real quick, a decent sized hole to fit everything through, and then we can finish up the rest of the wiring. If you're coming through a grommet next to wiring, make sure you're being very careful not drilling through wiring itself. That would be a bad situation. All right, I got the hole drilled. Now we're gonna run the two wires that go to the battery right through that hole. All right, so I have all of the wiring ran through here on the passenger side and up into the trunk back here. I'll show you what that looks like. This is all the wiring here. So I still have the remote turned on to plug or to connect. And then that, like I said, is a relay that goes to nothing. You just screw that down. These two go to the, to the air compressor. That one goes to the manifold. And then I have the wire that runs to the controller itself through this side, through here. And for now, it's just sitting right here. I haven't finished that up yet because I'm not exactly sure where I'm gonna mount the controller. I'll probably be up here somewhere, so I'll end up running that wire up through the dash and then out right here with, along with my GPS. So the next step is to get this air compressor wired up. There's two wires coming out of this as well. There's a red and a black. Those just connect to the red and black on that wiring harness. As you can see on this little wiring diagram here, you wanna use these two butt splicers to connect these wires coming from the air compressor to the wiring harness. So that's very easy to do. These both have a wiring connector on them. So what you're gonna wanna do is cut both of those off, strip some wiring off, and use these two little butt connectors right here to connect these to the wiring harness. So I am actually gonna get that done right now. Let's bring this compressor to the trunk. Like I said, guys, this is all gonna be just chilling in the trunk for the time being till I have time to build my custom trunk setup. So don't mind it. It's not gonna look the prettiest right now. It's not gonna look good at all right now, actually. It's gonna look terrible. But trust me guys, it's not gonna stay like that. So these two wires here, go to these two wires here. Red goes to red, black goes to black. So I got those two butt connectors connected, those are good to go. One thing you guys gotta remember to do is put your little filter on the end of the compressor. Make sure you're getting that on. So that is all good to go for that wiring. And now what I'm gonna do is connect this remote turn on. We're gonna add an inline fuse with this because I would highly recommend it. Any power line you should always have, it, have some sort of inline fuse with. So the fuse I have the pink remote wire going to is the let's see look let's look on here it's a 7.5 ignition 2 that's what is labeled on this fuse box here so it's over here i had to pull off one of these little tabs in the fuse box to get it to fit that is the only one that actually turns off when you turn off the car so the remote turn on wire is ran as you guys saw i still haven't connected these two that is going to be the very last thing i'm going to do is connect those two to the battery this red wire is definitely gonna get a fuse in between that and the battery. And in the trunk, I'll show you guys what I have going on right now. So I have everything else tucked under that back seat. Right now, all I have, this is the only wiring you're gonna need back here is this wire that goes to the manifold or the ECU. And I'm gonna keep, I think I might keep this up here somewhere as well, just so it's easy to access. I have the air compressor sitting, sitting right there for now. And now it is time to get some fittings onto the air tank. So there's all sorts of fittings we need to fit onto this tank. I'll show you guys what I am talking about. It has everything in the manual. Now go around the tank and pull out all these red plugs. There's two on each side, one on the bottom. And we need to figure out what side this tank's gonna mount on. So I'm gonna have the compressor line going into right there. I'll replace that red plug with a brass plug. On the bottom is gonna be a drain. And then this one right here is gonna be going to the manifold. This one right there is most likely gonna be plugged as well. Just gonna run through, get all these fittings on, and I'll show you guys the end result. All right, so this is how I have the tank set up. Got that one on the left-hand side plugged. The top one, that is gonna go to the air compressor. That top one is plugged. This one is gonna run to this water trap right here. So there's gonna be a line in between those, a line from there to there. And then a line goes from here to the manifold. And that one is plugged, the top one's plugged. This bottom one is a drain. They included a little drain valve kit. This here, that's gonna plug into that end right there. The other end is a drain that's gonna be on the outside of the vehicle. So let's go get this thing thrown up in the trunk. And from there, we're gonna run some lines. Okay, so I got the compressor connected to the air tank. 
all that's good to go. Now it's time to run some lines. So I set up the manifold in there about where I want it to sit after I build this wood trunk. I'm gonna definitely do away with that later on. I'll hide that somewhere else. So right now we're gonna set up that water trap, which is this guy right here. So this sits in between the air tank and the manifold. The last thing you want is water in your manifold. So that is why they include this. So I gotta figure out where I wanna mount this. And then we're gonna run a line from the tank to this, and then from this end to the manifold. Next up is to run the lines going to the front bags. So I'm gonna come out of there and I'm gonna run the two for the front in the same exact spot that I ran the power wires. So they're just gonna come through under the carpet over there, and then we are gonna run them through that same exact plug. And as you can see, it comes out right here. And for the leader line, coming from the bag, I ran it through my inner fender right there, just so there's no question at all whether it's gonna come out and start rubbing on my wheel or anything like that. You guys wanna throw it in a good location to where it's not gonna rub. Now we're just gonna cut this line right here, plug it into there, and that one is done. Then we can run the driver's side. You can run it however you like. You can run it on the driver's side of the car. I'm choosing to come across and go down in the same exact location that this one's running. So go ahead, bust those out. These are definitely a lot harder than the rears on this car, or should be on any car because the rears are gonna be a lot shorter. Let me show you guys how to properly use these. They're really, really simple to do. All you guys gotta do is put the line into the tool and press those, to, those two together and it's gonna cut the line. Okay, so we have all the wiring ran. We have the two lines going to the front ran. We have the line going from the manifold to the tank ran. All that's left, guys, the two rear lines and connecting the controller. And then we can set this thing on the ground, air it up, air it down, and mess with the height. As you guys can see, I'm actually flipping the manifold around. I think that's gonna be super clean looking. You guys can do it either way. And one thing I forgot to mention, all these hoses and lines are push to connect fittings. So to, to get them into, let me show you real quick. So for example, to get a hose onto, onto this fitting here, which are all the fittings, all you're gonna do Push it on and you're done. That's how easy it is. Last thing to do on this car, and then we can kind of mess around with the air ride a little bit and test it out. Uh, number one, still gotta connect these two wires to the battery. That's like I said, that's gonna be the very last thing we do. But we still have to run the rear lines and then the exhaust coming out of the manifold. So we're gonna run lines from the manifold and we're gonna go under the trunk. We're gonna go through the spare tire well and there's gonna be a plug. Pull this car put up, pull that spare tire out, find a plug under there and run two lines, one to each side, one to each corner, and also run the exhaust coming out of the manifold, which is gonna be on the very right, or for me, it'd be the very left because I have the manifold to flip around. And then guys, we can plug in the controller and kind of mess around with it. So you guys can run your rear lines however you want. Those are super, super easy to run because they are so short. All right guys, all of the lines are ran, the wiring is ran. The last thing to do is plug in those two to the battery, plug in the controller, and we can kind of mess around with the system. It's not all buttoned up yet, the interior is still torn apart, but we're gonna make sure we have everything connected properly, everything is working as it should. Obviously the car's not on the ground yet, so we can't mess around with the heights and all that, but let's go ahead, get those wires plugged in to the battery, get that controller in, and see how this thing works. So this here, I'm just adding a fuse to this power wire. You, like I said earlier, you always wanna have a fuse on any powered source. So I have a fuse on the power wire and I have a fuse on the wire that's running to the uh, to the remote turn on. So let's connect this power up. But now we're gonna connect this black wire to the ground. All right guys, last thing to do is get this wire onto the controller. So you just simply put it in the slot, push on it and it'll plug right in. This end right here plugs into the main wiring harness that we ran on the driver's side of the car from the trunk, from the main harness. So let's go get this thing plugged in and see what happens. As you guys can hear, we have power from that compressor. All right, this is what we're looking at right now. The top right is the tank pressure and then that's front left, front right, rear left, rear right for the bag, the bags themselves. So let's just go ahead, let the air up and try to throw some air in the bags. 
So it's on full manual right now. I'm just putting air in each bag. Right now is calibrating the system. It is supposed to be on the ground with all the wheels on it, but as you can see, I don't have wheels on the car right now. And I want to see if everything's working properly. So I'm going to let it calibrate. And then we're definitely going to recalibrate it after we get the car on the ground and making sure that we're not going to destroy the wide body when we calibrate it. Because when you calibrate it, the car moves up and down, does all that fun stuff on its own. And I don't want to destroy the fenders. So I'm going to have that, I'm going to let that thing run through the calibration and then see what's next. This video is coming to an end. The full air system is now installed on the car. We're ready to go. It's still not fully, fully, um, it's not all the way tidied up. So I'm going to run through, tuck some, retuck some wires. And then another day we're going to build that trunk. And then another day I'll show you how to set heights with like your, on your air out. So if you want to air out and you want lift defender, like I'm going to go with this car, then I'll show you how to do all that. But right now I'm gonna just kind of mess around. I'll show you guys it when I pull it off the jack stands, get some wheels on it and try to air out. Let's see what happens. So it is currently sitting. Obviously I want it to go a good amount lower. I got the front a decent amount low. I just kind of messed around with it for a minute just to just to play around with it. The rear is higher than it used to be on coilovers. So of course I'm going to mess with the height tomorrow and that will bring me to tomorrow's video. Tomorrow's video is going to be showing you guys how to adjust these bags for when you air out. It's pretty much the same concept as coilovers, but there's a few there, but there's a few little things here and there I want to show you guys. So that will be tomorrow's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really hope it helped you guys out if you are planning on doing air ride in the future or you're doing air ride right now and you had have, you have some questions, I really hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any more questions, drop them down in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys. If you guys want to pick up this full three-piece system for your FRS or BRZ, I'll also have a link of that down below in the description box. So go use that link. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video right here. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in tomorrow's video.